I'm Arne van Oosterom and this is the Surface Design Show. In the Service Design Show, we talk to people that are shaping the service design field. Uh, we talk about the current state of the industry, exciting new developments and challenges up ahead. Today, I'm talking to somebody who's been in the industry for a very long time, Arno van Oostrom. Arno is, of course, the co-founder of Design Thinkers, and he just told me he's when he grows up, he wants to be a real artist. Welcome to the show, Arno. Thank you. Awesome to have you. Oh, no. um, this is a question I start uh, uh, most of my interviews and it's about your first memory of service design. Can you remember the first time you actually got in touch with service design? Oh yeah, oh boy that's a long time ago. I, I was working at a uh, communications agency, I was the um, creative director and uh, I think I was looking for new inspiration and um, we were already kind of interested in doing things differently in, in a new way, but I, I, I think it's also because of the rise of, I think Twitter was just born. And Which year I was this, 2007, 2008? No, no, no uh, 2006 or five. All right. I think. Um, uh, and it must be somewhere around where Twitter just came about because I remember that we there was this conversation starting online uh, about uh, service design and it was um, mainly in the UK there were these two agencies that just started uh, Engine Group and LiveWork they just started that, uh, that time and I was so inspired by the way they communicated and the way they were very open about everything and I was stuck in this very competitive agency world which I, I didn't like at all um, and, I, and I thought wow you can be like you can share all your methodologies and can just, you can just be open. You know, be open about stuff and, uh, and it was so refreshing and I thought I want to be like that I, wanna, I don't know what they do <laughs> But I just, you know, yeah, and it, you know, so it, it was very attractive as, a, as, a, as a, the openness, um, and I, I, so it must be like 2005 or so. Uh, how, how long did yeah. it take you to uh, to jump on the bandwagon? Well, um, so I think in that same year I also heard about design thinking mm -hmm. and uh, being proposed as sort of a, this thing that wasn't a part of a specific uh, expertise so it was in between sort of the creative world the design world and the business world and and I thought hey I think this is where I am does that have a name <laughs> well wow, that's amazing I think I think this is where I should be yeah and uh, and I was at that time I, I was already kind of thinking of starting my own company yeah. uh, by chance as well because I uh, you know I, I just uh, I didn't uh, uh, I didn't want to be part of sort of because if you have an agency, a communication agency or an advertisement agency, you're always the last to know. Basically, your customer has a solution and they will give you a design brief and they already have sort of the solution. They say, oh, we want to have a website mm -hmm. or we mm -hmm. have a campaign. And I, and, I, and I noticed that there was so much changing in the world that you can't, you, you have to look at things holistically. And I, so I was already really curious about can I be at the beginning of the process? And design thinking kind of was sort of that thing that, that spark was the first spark. And so at the same time, uh, we, I kind of got to know service design and, and I decided to start my own company. About 2005, uh, I first tried to kind of change the direction of my agency, mm -hmm. but that at that time, nobody knew what I was talking about. They're like, what? what are you talking about? What is that service, what? You know, design what? You know, uh, I, I just want to do beautiful. I want to create a beautiful campaign, or I want to be. I want to do graphic design, or so. Uh, the easiest way, basically, for me was to kind of say, I just, I'm just going to start from scratch. And I think we took the official leap in 2000. I think Chamber of Commerce, basically, the signing was 2007. Right. 
I, I still remember we had a session, uh, I think, in Amsterdam. Uh, a guy from England showed up to talk about service design, and it was, I think, 2007. We, that might be very well be the very first time we actually uh, physically met. All right. Right. Yeah. True. Oh, we're getting old. Man. Yeah. And the rest <laughs> is history. That's uh, that's for sure. Uh, so at, uh, I'm uh, I'm here in Utrecht at the uh, at the Oude Gracht Jorn uh, Hotel in Amsterdam. So we might have some background noise, uh, livelihood from uh, from uh, the real uh, real streets. Um, that will uh, will be okay, I think. Arno. Let's uh, explain the format, how we're going to do this uh, for the people who are watching this for the first time. The whole idea is that we believe in co-creation and uh, we should actually practice it also in the show. So you have a set of question starter and I have a set of topics uh, written on paper and you also have some things scribbled down in a notebook, right? Yes. Let's give an example. I am the service designer. designer. And you have how much. So you'll use the question starters, I'll use the topics, and uh, we'll uh, create a conversation uh, from there on. Sounds yes. simple, right? Absolutely. Okay, it's, uh, it's my turn, Arne. I'm, uh, I'm going to choose a topic, and it's up to you to, uh, to see how you're going to, um, okay. to move on. Um, I'm going to pick the topic of scalability. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. How can we? Yes. So, how can we? And I think uh, um, I think it's a really important question. Uh, it's a question that uh, we get a lot um, because uh, it's very much workshop based. The work that has been done now. So, uh, which question do we get a lot? How can you what? So how can we uh, scale service design mm -hmm. within our within our organization? All right. So and uh, um, and so the question really is about how can we make sure that you know that what we do in our department, at which we call service design, we did a workshop, and did we did another workshop, and and then what? You know, how do we can how can this this spread, or or what do we do with it? How does this? How can this? service design thing that we do touch you know the, every bit of our organization and that's something that uh, that a lot of people struggle with um, I think uh, one of the at least one of the answers is that um, actually it service design should not be a department um, All right. uh, so it's service design is part of culture it's it's actually behavior and uh, which which is why I really truly believe that when you're in service design, actually what you're doing is you are changing behavior, you are in, in, uh, in change management, um, uh, but in a very different way. But it, and it's something that is more implicit, so you can do workshops, uh, but actually what you do is really important. Uh, so uh, journey mapping and, uh, and all that, it's really important, it's very much forward looking, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the workshop, you have these and these results. It's very good. But actually, how you do it is even or even more important, uh, or, 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 or at least uh, as, uh, just as important, uh, because how you do it makes it also sustainable. Mm -hmm. It makes it that you want to work like that again. You, uh, because we ask silly questions like, did you actually like it? Was it actually nice? So how you do it? Did you actually share? Did you actually co-create? Did you actually do? Did you actually involve the right people, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, so this how you do is really important. And the other thing is, don't turn it into a department. It's a way of working. So, but, but that's really hard it. to scale, right? And unless you are going to uh, get the IBM approach and hire one thousand designers and put them throughout your whole organization. Is yeah, that a so, way to scale service design? No, I think it's uh, basically practicing what you uh, preach when you preach service design is start small. Start small, learn how to do it, and start evolve, uh, involving it. I always say don't start a project, don't start this, you know, this, this kind of organization, start a movement. You have to, it has to be a movement because it's about, it's all about changing the way you do things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's not about 
uh, 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 hiring a couple of people you call service designer uh, and, and, and then you do service design. Right. It's actually about you have to evolve your company. Uh, it's about a companies in transition and everyone's involved. Everyone. But it starts small. Don't scale. Don't, don't, don't implement uh, service design and then try to you know, scale it up too quick and make it too right. big. And, you know, because then it's going to fail. You have to learn how to do it. It's part of your culture. It's part of, yeah. of, of, uh, of your DNA. You, you know, what we see in our practice is that it's really easy to scale a tool. Everyone starts doing customer journey maps and then, yes. uh, uh, yeah, yep. we're customer centric. And, uh, yeah, everybody uh, has a customer journey map for the department. Yes. But that's just on the yeah. tool. Map. Even not Absolutely. the method level, but that's just yeah. on a tool level. No, very good point. It's exactly what, what, I, what I mean. It's like that's, that is what you do. So you can teach everyone customer journey mapping, but I mean, but how you do it? Did you do it together with the right people? Did you actually do it with your customer? Mm -hmm. did, really? Did you go out and talk to? Really? Did you really do that? Because usually they didn't. Um, you know, did you actually build empathy, real empathy? Mm -hmm. did, did you really involve the right stakeholders, the right people at the right time? Because it's a lot about how you do it and and, and, and when you do it. Do you, did you do it at the right time with the right people in the right way in the well, right safe environment? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of rights in your uh, answer and getting the right people that might, defining what is right I think that's big that's a big yes. opportunity but that's also a big challenge for companies well it's it's also common sense so uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, the things that we teach our, our customers I think is about common sense it's mm -hmm. about asking silly questions mm -hmm. like we've always done it this way and we say let's do it another way. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we can't. We, but why? We've always done it this way. Well, you know, why did you? Why have you always done it that way? And why? Why can't you try and change it that way? Is that actually? Is that so? Com companies come to us with a question. The first thing we'll say is that you know, let's look at the question. If that is that really the right question? And so that first part of that, you know, that fuzzy front end of innovation. That first part is usually the most hardest part because this is where you have no answers, you only have questions, but allow that to happen. Give, give people the time and the space, so creating safe space for people to actually question things and ask things. So again, this, this is about how you do it. It's not just what you do, it's how you do it. Did you actually spend time in that fuzzy front end mm. long enough so you know that you know you actually explored, you actually did explore opportunity, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think um, scalability is a really important question, but you cannot implement service design or slash design thinking um, without using service design slash design thinking. Um, and it sounds really silly, but we've seen a lot of companies trying to implement service design without using service design. So without actually thinking about who actually is supposed to use these tools, mm. who are these people, etc. Well, I, I, I think the challenge is that scaling service design requires, like you said, starting small, but it needs big support because yes. it's transi oh, transitioning yes. their the, the organization, and that's it's not a yes. task you you will achieve when you. Well, Absolutely, you yeah. So if you if you have if you do not have management support, don't do it. Right. Seriously, it's not going to work. Right. Uh, you might want to start trying to convince them, which is something different than, than implementing a scaling. Uh, you might want to do that, uh, but before you have total support, you know, it's 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 you know, it's not, it's not going to work. So um, they need to create environments at the stage for you to be able to try it, to explore it, to experiment, to start small. And, uh, but it requires a new style of leadership. And I think uh, the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges of most companies is actually that they, if they want to make the leap to this sort of this new world, they need a new style of leadership. It's a big task. Yeah, but uh, that's why it's so much fun. So uh, it's not a boring time. This is the right time to do this kind of stuff, right? Anna. <clears throat> Let's move on to uh, to our next topic, and uh, I think it's sort sort of related, um, and it's called beyond buzzwords. Yeah, yeah. Um, good question. What do I add to it? Maybe maybe this one is good. Why? 
why do we need to uh, move on, uh, move beyond the buzzwords? I think uh, it's important to make to give clarity. Uh, to uh, there, I think there's a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, we are called design thinkers. Um, uh, design thinking is is, is 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 getting hugely popular at the moment, which is uh, which is great. Uh, but service design is that different? So we you know, questions mm -hmm. we get like. So, so we talk to customers who have never heard of service design, right? And and we talk to customers who, have, who you know, no, actually, everybody's heard of design thinking at the moment, uh, but uh, because of Harvard yeah. Business Review. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, it's people who do lean startup. There's people who come from agile development. There's people who have you know, you know whatever kind of uh, uh, angle they are from. But we're all part of the same world. We are all part of the same. Uh, 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 problems that we see, we are all part of the same solutions, we are all part of what's happening out there that, that drives us to find new ways of doing things. So we just came from this angle and the people from Agile Development came from ITICT angle and you know a Lean Startup came from that angle, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It doesn't really matter if we don't use our sort of, uh, uh, if we don't use an open mindset to, to, to talk to each other and to learn from each other. So don't stick to your buzzword. I mean, we by chance called ourselves design thinkers very naively, but at the time it didn't mean anything. So now it seems really silly. But uh, but I mean, it's not about the word. The word only is language, and it means that we it's a, it's a tool that allows us to talk to each other. And so if if you have your flag planted on service design or lean startup, I mean, let go of this. You know, collaborate, co-create, be. You know, learn from each other. Why it's important for us is because we can learn from each other. It's, mm. it's for me. It's like you, you're doing design thinking. You have never heard of service design. There's such a wealth mm -hmm. of knowledge mm -hmm. and talent out there. Mm -hmm. You know what? How is that possible? Yeah, you know. Um, uh, 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 but at the same time, our clients are also confused. Right. So we actually have to say, what language do they talk? Do they talk service design or do they talk? Do they do they speak mm -hmm. design thinking? So we're like, okay, oh, they talk about design thinking. All right, so we'll call everything. We have to change our, our slides on key, you know, like to change the words. And then some people started calling it service design thinking to kind of like, you yeah. know. And it's so I think it's a good conversation to have with the community. Um, and I'm not saying I have an answer. I'm not saying that so for now on we're going to call it whatever. But I think that we should go beyond those buzzwords to talk about what it's for. Mm -hmm. It's a means to an end. What is the end? It's mm -hmm. about human-centric development, right. human-centric problem solving. Right. That's what it's about. Right. And all of us are trying to do this. We, we just provide a tool set to yes. get to that goal and get to yeah. the... Yeah. And who cares what the tools are from? I mean, if they're six yeah, Sigma Who cares, Arna? Who, who does care, actually? Because... I don't know, but 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 I, I do know that there's D school, you know, and then there's SDN, and then there's like you know there's a service, this is mm. this is something. What? No, maybe this that's just German professors uh, speaking, but I don't know. But I'm saying it's about what it's for. We practice what we preach. Right. These are means to an end. The means are tools. The world is our toolkit. You know, we are open-minded. We are curious. We are creative people. All of us are. What are we trying to do? What is the question? You know, it's, and it's about people trying to create value for other people. But I think also, you know, having this sort of flag helps the community at this moment to get around and, and actually sure. All, sure. enlarge the topic and create new knowledge. So. Yeah, 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 no, I, I, I know. So, I mean, obviously, there. It, it, again, it's, it's useful to to create community and to share to create language, but don't use it to create walls around communities. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's sort of what's 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 going to happen. It's been happening. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not there to create like this is mine. You know, it's mm -hmm. not to create islands. It's to create bridges. Mm -hmm. It is it is to have conversations. That's what language is for. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, and and it should not confuse the hell out of, out of your customers, you know. And it's not a marketing gimmick. Don't use it for your PR. You know, it's that's bullshit. So mm -hmm. it's about creating value for people, mm -hmm. and 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 we use everything we have to to do so. And whatever language you speak, and whatever the point of design thinking or service design is that you actually are open-minded, and you are uh, you co-create 
with people from different backgrounds, with you know, multidisciplinary teams. The whole core of what we do is about sharing, being open, and not claiming things, not saying, this is my, this is my idea. No, it's not. It's about building stages and platforms for other people and helping them, you know, and being facilitators. And how do you see this progressing in the next few years? Because I'm pretty skeptical uh, about the walls coming down. Well, um, so I think that, uh, the, like we, I mean, we've seen this, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, happening for a couple of years. Obviously, which is a logical thing is that the big business consultancies are moving in. Yeah. We also do journey mapping. We are also design thinkers. We also do service, and we and they're smart and they're brilliant people. So, uh, but I think they're. The problem, main problem of, of these companies is that their business model is also broken, just like their customers' right. business model is broken. Uh, so they they don't. Uh, if you don't, if you do not practice what you preach, you can't really preach mm. anything. Mm. Really. Mm. So it's it's very difficult for them. Um, and I think that collaboration is uh, basically the new competition. It's it, the people who can collaborate best uh, are the ones who are going to flourish. And it's not about creating huge. Uh, uh, organizations uh, based on uh, you know industrial revolution uh, models I think the new world is for the networks um, and for people who understand that actually it's about you know getting connecting people uh, and and which is the, you know the, the, that's the core of what design is it's connecting you know things that are not connected yet or, or connecting them better I think you have to be able to do it so skeptical in a one way, yes, I think it's going to be hijacked. It still it already is being hijacked by uh, large uh, consultancies, uh, uh, companies, organizations. Uh, you know, even SAP offers yeah. uh, design yeah. thinking, yeah. Uh, uh, training courses. Uh, uh, you know, um, fine, and and I know, and we train them to do so. So I mean, it's you know, you know that's. But I, I think that's our point. Uh, we are actually facilitators, and we believe that. If you are truly human centric, uh, uh, um, I think we're going to create a better world. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not truly human centric and you're really truly are not doing the right thing and you're not really applying it to yourself, you're not going to be successful. Um, uh, but um, I think it's going to be a struggle uh, as anything is, but I, I really enjoy the way it's moving at the moment and I think we are supposed to be very flexible and agile and open and, and so I think we'll be okay and I think it's uh, might maybe we'll call it differently uh, in the future uh, but I don't see a big threat at the moment I see a lot of opportunities for uh, for companies like ours <clears throat> okay um, and I think what you just said is also very good um, Rich, for so the, the the last topic I've written down here because you talked about networks and collaboration. Um, so Arno, the last topic is the service designer. Uh, 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 yes, good question. Who are the service designers? Yes, I I, I, I people who know me. Uh, I uh, often say there's no such thing as a service designer. I don't believe in the service designer as a, as a I don't understand. Uh, I think we have people in our organization, actually we call them service designer because our clients look for service designers. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's a bit of a complicated thing. Um, I think that, uh, and it, it's kind of, kind of you know, um, uh, start a conversation often where I say, you know, either Everyone in an organization is the service designer, or no one is. All right. Um, yeah. But, and I think to that point, what we see now is that we uh, are working increasingly for HR uh, departments. So, you know, we work for Coca Cola HR, Global Business Services, we work for L'Oreal HR. You know, a lot of these companies see that actually innovation is not just on product levels, not just on service levels, also on organizational level, internal service level, but also how you operate, the style of leadership. And they are looking for uh, service design uh, to help them really um, change their organization. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I think that, so we train you know, HR people to become facilitators. And I think that 
service designer should be replaced with a facilitator, someone who understands how to connect the different dots and how to create safe space and how to really get people to share, et cetera, et cetera. I think that that will be really good. Uh, um, I think it would be really good uh, a skill to have within your organization. And we're, tr you know, tr people, it, so when we started doing service design, I never thought I was going to work with Coca-Cola HR. Right. I right. know uh, I didn't I, I didn't even imagine even working with Coca Cola obviously uh, because it was it was you know we're tiny nothing uh, so that's already a big leap but also but for HR like oh that's amazing because and they want to be able to do it they don't want, don't want to have those skills they want to be able to 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 become what which we might call the service designer and I think uh, that's a fantastic uh, 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 fantastic evolution. Of, uh, of what we do. I, I think Idris Muthi, if I'm not uh, wrong, wrote in his book that we shouldn't hire design thinkers or service designers, but we should become a design thinking company or design driven company. Yeah. Is that I something you're advocating too? Yeah, I mean, not, uh, not getting lost in uh, you know the, the, the semantics of uh, what exactly, is. but uh, the, the heart of what it is is uh, it's about uh, is right. I think it's it is about. I think um, new companies are what we what you could call design driven companies. Right. Um, it doesn't mean everyone's a designer, no, uh, but it's more about uh, uh, being empathetic, you know, uh, being open minded. Being collaborative uh, and being uh, a prototyping company, start doing things really quickly and you know and, and iterate. So it ha you know being iterative and human centered, uh, these are the two elements that if you have those, you know uh, you are what you could call a design driven company. And I think that's you know if you look at, you know and the other thing which is something been said by uh, Charles Ledbetter actually in a very old book we mm. think. Uh, but it's so true, and it's it's so true in many levels. Uh, he had this really interesting um, uh, he, uh, uh, anecdote. So he said, um, uh, "Traditional companies are bigger on the inside than on the outside. Mo new companies are bigger on the outside than on the inside." And that's so true. I mean, you know, companies like that, you know, startups like Instagram, for instance. You know, if you look at how many people work at Instagram and how big their influence and their impact is. You know, it's completely the opposite uh, to what we are, or, or what we are familiar with. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think we are moving to that to that world, and I and I'm uh, and I'm really positive about. And it, it, there's a huge reason for it. And I mean, we work so just 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 as a last point, uh, we work for HR, and they tell us, for instance, uh, listen, we are losing talent to mm -hmm. startups. How how can we keep talent into our company and keep them there? And how do you, you know, because we can't at the moment because because work for us and for new generations. And actually, I was talking to this 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 manager and uh, and I, I said, yeah, yeah, for new generations, work is very different because it's part of your identity. It's it's not just for security, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. She said, and she was in her fifties, and she said, Arna, listen, it's not just for new generations. <laughs> well, one, one second, Arne. I, I, I thought this would happen. <laughs> There's a car coming to pick you up, uh, Mark. All right, goodbye. Well, yeah, my so my anecdote was that, that I, I was I was I was talking about this to this this manager, this lady, and uh, from HR, and she um, and so I and she agreed with me. Yes, 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 it's different. But she also said, "Look, Arne, listen, I'm in my fifties. I want to work differently. You know, new generations." Yeah, right. You know, I want to work differently. I don't want to work. I don't want to work every day in a marathon because work is every day here in my company is a marathon just to pay the bonuses of, of, of senior management. Why am I doing that? What's 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 the point? You know, and and being scared of making mistakes and and and, and you know, we, we know the story. Uh, so how do we create an environment for people, you know, to, that they can be happy? Silly word, you know, and 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 actually uh, be uh, make mistakes, learn, and mistakes not being the right word, but learn basically as we do as human beings by trying stuff, trying things out. How can we create that environment? And so is it is it the the biggest challenge maybe to first become a 
let's call it a design driven company before you yes. can actually go outside and well be it's common sense right i mean of course it is but I, you, I don't think a lot of people a lot of organizations have coped with this yet no but they know they know mm -hmm. i've never met anyone within a large corporate that did not agree with that idea but they just don't know how to do it so the first battle is uh, maybe much more internally uh, focused than it's yes it's externally so we we moved from service design being this uh, this uh, kind of this uh, idea of creating beautiful services, wonderful services that created great experiences for customers, to actually saying so, because I think that uh, in in the all in the sort of old literature of service design, it you know it's all about uh, looking at your end users and looking through the eyes of the end user, outside in thinking. We move from saying yeah okay that's really important you know, but actually. What's maybe even more important is looking from the inside. So, why are you in the business that you're in? Yeah. Because yeah. companies have no clue. So, how do you make decisions? So, they only make decisions based on how to make, how much profit they will make by doing something, not um, not based on values or anything. Um, so, if you come up with this wonderful service, how do you implement that? How do you run it? How do you keep it alive? How do you actually execute? How do you actually do it? So, there's a lot of uh, around. Uh, brand, for instance, brand became so much more important the, the last few years. Being authentic, being real, so t is doing what you say you would do. Uh, you know, practice what you preach. Acting, you know, the way you act is is a represent sort of your brand. It's it's not a, it's not just a, a, a it's not just a an add-on. It's not just a logo on your building. Or it, you can't ask advertisement agencies anymore to kind of create sort of this buzz around your brand or run your whole company through a training and then hope everybody will be different the next morning yes so it is about you really have to be authentic and real and do what you say etc etc which is a big task but if you make it it is fantastic it is beautiful you're going to be happy wow you can actually make money and be happy doing it at the same time which is like a very novel kind of thing uh, because it's a big promise you're making i know <laughs> yeah but i but i really truly really believe in it and uh, uh and, it's, and it's and it's very difficult but it's worth it i think this will be a frontier that uh, design thinking and service design um, will really need to develop itself in the, the internal yes. frontier instead of or well, next to the uh, external Customer focused uh, frontier. Yes. I think we'll see a lot of development in the coming years in that, uh, that field. Yeah, I think so too. I know we, are, uh, we have a lot to, the, to discuss and we could go on for, for uh, quite a few hours, but let's, let's try to round it up a bit. My question to you would be um, if you encounter people that want to get into uh, design thinking or service design, what would be your most valuable tip? What is your golden tip for them? Um, get experience. Get experience. Don't, 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 don't just read about it. Uh, don't just look at videos like this. Go out and, and, and do, 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 do. Create your own movement. Start stuff. I mean, you know, Mark, you, you know, you and I, when we started, you know, there were service on drinks. Uh, there were all kinds of little events. You know, create the community. Be a movement. Be the movement. Go, go out and do stuff. Um, find out how you can be active because uh, that's the only way to learn. People will look for experienced people uh, and, and uh, in any way you can get experience. Start your own projects, uh, you know, do it, uh, do it for cheap, do it for free, uh, start stuff yourself, you know, um, I, I, if, we, if we look for people, we look for people who are doers and, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's the trick and if you find out how that works, and it's a bit of a trick because sometimes you think, how can I start with nobody, you know? So don't wait for people to give you the break, you know, just go out and do it. Just go out and do it. All right. Arna, um, this is your opportunity. Do you have a question for the people that are actually looking at this video right now? What would be your question to them? My question would be, if you look at your own work environment, if you look at the things you do day in, day out to make a living, um, what would that look like in the future? 
if you really, really decide on what that future would look like, and wouldn't it be great if what you do actually created value for people, real value, real value, not just uh, not just creating products or services or whatever, but and what would that look like? So I, I think it's an important question because it's uh, I think that if all of us kind of start thinking about, you know, how can we actually make this world a little bit better? And it's, I know it sounds very naive, but if we all start thinking about how can I make the world a little better, even just good for the people that you work with, that's, that's fine. I think it's going to have a huge impact. And I think that's important. So that will be my question. Really curious uh, what people have to say about this in the comments. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Arna, uh, I really, really want to thank you for your time and uh, uh, having, taking the opportunity to actually sit in a hotel and take the time and uh, share your thoughts because I think it's really important and really valuable. Again, thank you. What are your thoughts about the topics we've just discussed with Arna? And if you have any suggestions on who we should invite next on the show, be sure to let us know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, and like to see more interviews with service design pioneers, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of our past episodes. With the Service Design Show, we help you to stay a step ahead by talking to the people that are actually shaping the service design field. Thanks for watching.